Dis Ronel beseid dat dit is een voorrecht om saam met jou elke week te kuier en mense te leer ken wat veel kleurig is. Vandag is een zondag waar ek hierdie opname maak en ek praat met Doc Mabila, een van die veel kleurigste mense saam met wie ek gewerk het vir een paar jaar. Uiters intelligente man, medisch studeer en toe besluit om dit te los. En vandag is hy betrokke by opheffing en jong ontwikkeling, tiener ontwikkeling. Hy is een manager van Youth Zone van Wits Universiteit. Dis te veel om op te noem wat hy alles doen. Maar hy leef op grondvlak met mense wat arm is. En ek het gedink dat dit een goeie ding is om met Doc Mabila te gesels, terwyl ons in hierdie land op die oomlik na soveel mense van met soveel opinies moet luister, ook uit soveel verskillende kleure. Luister saam met my na Doc Mabila. This is a wonderful opportunity. I've got Doc Mabila next to me. Doc, I already gave an introduction about you. So now I want to say welcome. It's wonderful. Just tell me and the and the viewers where you are exactly at the moment. Uh, my, uh, morning, my friend, and uh, thank you, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it's always amazing to to hear from you. Um, uh, Ronel, I'm, at the moment I'm in a place called Makuba Sloop. Uh, it's in Zanin. Uh, it's a beautiful part of South Africa. It's green and a lot of rivers and a lot of uh, farms around here, a lot of avos, um, a lot of citrus fruit. So it's also my hometown. So I'm just uh, spending uh, time with my grandmother for a day or two. And then um, uh, she's just, she's over 100 yes. years old. So she's, she can't hear anymore. And, uh, but uh, we must appreciate them while they're still going strong. So um, just to see her face and bring some present for her. And then before I hit the, the road again to Waterbeck, I'm on my way to Waterbeck for work. Okay, okay, okay. So Doc, now first you're talking about work. Just tell the people exactly what you do, because I can't understand that a guy that studied medicine does the work that you do, that you've chosen to do this work. What do you do for a living? Yeah, so um, I'm involved, uh, my friend, my, uh, I do a lot of community development work um, around South Africa. Uh, I'm also uh, leading the anti-poaching unit in uh, Mozambique, um, but uh, not the anti-poaching with the combat unit. I don't, I don't shoot, but I use, I create alternatives for the poor people. Um, that's what basically... That's what I do all over the country. And I'm also a program manager for a project called Youth Goals. And we have 48 sites around South Africa, Mozambique, and Zimbabwe. And uh, our target is the poor of, I don't, if any township, or any village, or any scholar camp, I target uh, the, the outcasts, the ones who are neglected, the ones who are ignored. So um, that's what keeps me busy. It got me to travel with my marriage because I'm always <laughs> on the road. But uh, yeah, we have over 60,000 uh, beneficiaries and direct beneficiaries to work with and um, a lot of solar teams, netball teams and art groups. Uh, that's what keeps me busy, but I'm also involved. Uh, I don't know if my friend, you know, Beater Enders. Yeah. Uh, so I'm also a director there. And um, I'm just helping the guys. Uh, there are a lot of... Um, I got involved as a director because, as men, there are a lot of uh, I believe a lot of a lot of white people or rich people, black people or Indian or Chinese, whoever can be, who is rich but they want to do good. There's so much yeah. discouragement we see every day. So, uh, better and I was involved. I got involved because I was there to because I got a great pool, a great network of the poor people who want to always reach out to the other other people from the other side. So. Yeah. And I'm there to direct these um, um, lungus and uh, the rich to do things in the right way. And there's so many who want to do good. And I'm just there saying, I'm here. Uh, we've got a network. They want to be your friends. Over 60,000 real people on the ground, genuine friends. And that's what I'm doing. I'm involved with the theater and else. And I also have uh, some few other projects 
called Black Man Club. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying yeah. to remove the black, the black woman, but uh, Black Man Club is just uh, influential black guys and um, who are like celebrities. Myself, I played football before, so we I use that as a vehicle to to role model our own people to be a good example as black people. I mean, in many ways, from yeah. how to treat your kids, parenting, up to um, even small things, picking up the, the litter or as adults, how to some skills we never taught as black kids when we're young. So I'm involved in that, um, but it's very informal and uh, very, but it's very, very influential because these are the guys who got a big, big uh, uh, followers around the country. So that's what I do, my background, and I study medicine, as you said, my friend. Um, but um, um, in life, you go to a point where you I sacrifice my medicine and my football to do what I'm doing. It's more of a calling what I'm doing. Yeah, it's not yeah. uh, uh, it's the work. I wake up every day, I'm going to live my life. Yeah. And um, just living the will of God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But how did you become a Christian, John? <laughs> Good question. Um, look, um, and that's why probably that's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I think... I was young, I guess I plus happy. So <laughs> I grew up in a farm. I grew up in a farm compound. Uh, my dad was a farm worker. My mom was a farm worker. So I didn't go to preschool. They would leave me under the orange tree as a one year old and go pick up oranges and fix the oranges, trees, or whatever. So I grew up like that. But there was one guy who was a missionary. He worked for a bachelor farm. His name is Aaron Musubi. He's still involved with bachelor farms. But he was going around the farms. And um, he he went up and I just started following him. I remember I, I started following him as a, as, as a young child. I mean, I didn't have a role model at all. So I I had a heart. I didn't want to be like, I had a heart to follow God because where I grew up and, and the farms, it was rough. Man. I saw dead bodies as young. I picked up dead bodies. Uh, people stabbing each other over 50 rand or 50 cents. Uh, that's what I grew up with. My dad used to own taverns, uh, the farms compound. So I uh, see people fighting blood everywhere and I said I don't want to do this and um, and but the calling was all the same I think I the heart the love um, my heart was just after God's heart man. so when I saw Aaron and I wanted to be like him and um, that's the reason why I stop everything I'm doing today is because um, I think I might be uh, a, a, a lot of kids if not one um, it's Aaron out there you know every day I give my life I want to go out there and reach out my work is not, uh, it's a mission. It's outreach, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's a cool outreach because I play a lot of football and we do a lot of IT yeah. training and whatever, life skills, but it's still an outreach, my friend. So yeah. I go out there, I give my life, um, uh, not in a, a bragging way, but I give my life for our own people. And I believe that there can be more dogs. I don't know, uh, you know, there can be more of me. I don't want to be the only doctor. I don't want to be the only doctor. I don't want to be the only superstar yeah. for our national team. But um, that's the reason why I became a Christian was just try to be not to be a seen violence and a lot of instability, bad parenting, and when I was young, and I just wanted to do the opposite, man. And uh, yeah, so and that's what inspired me. And so yeah. I'm trying to be someone's reason to be a good person, someone's reason to be to follow God somewhere, somewhere, wherever. I can't change the whole world, but yeah. wherever I am, yeah. You live your work. I try, my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, uh, Doc, that's how I've experienced you for the past how many years that we know one another. You live your work. Your, your, your um, delight in what you do is also a delight in your life. That's how I, I can imagine that these things that's really... Uh, burning your heart with sorrow with all the things that you see but if I think of the 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 light that shines from you it's in your work and it's in your everyday life now you is a follower of Christ in every way I know now and that's why I also want to talk to you we are living in um, it, it's a it's a cliche to say that it's desperate times on the one hand, it's times that I've been expecting to happen for a very long time. And personally, I don't think that this is going to be the last time. Tell me what is your perspective 
of what's happening in the country at the moment? So yeah, my friend, uh, um, yeah, personally from my side, uh, I think the, the country has got its own history and um, uh, where we come from. Uh, and, um, and first of all, South Africa is a beautiful country, my friend. Um, so let's not forget that uh, there's so much beauty in this country, irrespective of what's happening at the moment. Um, and there's so many people who I've, I've spoken to who have friends all over the world and they admire South Africa. And of course, we have a serious issue with violent crime, which I think everyone's fearing of. Violent crime is a problem. We're too aggressive. Uh, but uh, personal of what is happening at the moment in our country, uh, it's one of my passion. Uh, I'm more into integration. I'm more into seeing different people coming together. And the reason I'm, I'm more passionate about that uh, is because I grew up where I have experienced what it means to be discriminated based on my skin color. I mean, I had people in the middle of nowhere, in a restaurant, and they would approach me in the middle of up and say, since we're not allowed, allowed to call you a K-word, what must I call you? <laughs> and I just said, call me your friend, you know? Uh, so it's difficult, and uh, not everyone will be like me uh, to be in a... Um, um, and uh, that's why I think South Africa, we haven't rubbed enough, each other enough emotionally. Uh, we, I think we, we jumped and it was good. We didn't have a civil war in a way. And it's fair to say this on, uh, but we, we're supposed to be close to where we know each other better. We were, uh, and where we, we take it out. So the reason I'm saying is that so many people are still hurting and people are still in pain, uh, irrespective of all the money. I mean, you've got people who are, walking out live on TV, but they have millions from anywhere, you know? Um, so what, what, what would be the reason for someone who got, got millions, but you still get, you get emotional when it's something to do with race, or if there's some kind of responsibility or accountability, and you still, um, you still divert things to race issues. So you can, you can tell of what's happening in our country at the moment. We haven't healed enough. We haven't, we're not united as we claim to be. Um, and, and I think uh, the certain and that that um, uh, kind of um, energy and uh, that kind of uh, interaction has grown so much in such a way that we're living out of media, my, my friend. And it's the sad part about South Africa. That so many people are feeding and shaping their life out of uh, media, social media. And it's, it's very cheap, it's very fake, it's very misdirecting. And uh, I think. We need more of uh, Ronel and Doc, uh, who are friends in the, on the ground. And that's my passion. And that's how uh, I'm driven about integration. And we have a project called Zebra Crossing, where I try to bring in real life, ride together, eat together, hang out, play soccer, teach other how to dance. Uh, but real life, real people, and a majority of the people on the ground, yeah. they want to be people's friends. So unfortunately, at the moment, things are run in a superficial way. and. Uh, as if people will care about the country. And I'm worried about that. We, yeah. we, we're we not putting the country first. There's yeah. so much yeah. ego, there's so much hating. And, and don't get me wrong, um, I'm, I mean, at the moment, things still have gone worse. And uh, things can still go worse. It, I think once us as people come together and take power into our own hands uh, in a good way, because I know there are a lot of good people in South Africa, black, white, Indian, Chinese, everything. Um, who are rich. I've seen so many. And the problem is they don't get enough air time uh, to, you know, it's only me and you, we start inciting each other and then we're going to go on media. But yeah. when yeah. stuff like this or what they're doing in, your, in the Cape, no one wants to share that. No one wants to share the good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you, are, remi you are reminding me two things. The one is yeah. not to look only at, not to ignore the issues on television, for example, but also to do, to be very, very, um, it's actually a discipline to say, I want to see what is beautiful as well, because ugly things may happen at the moment, but that's not the only things that's happening. That's the one thing. And the second thing is to start making friendships on the ground with people living differently like you, like me. If I think of a white woman, the first person that she's got contact with is the lady working in her house. Start really making a friendship. Eh? Do the, yeah. Yeah. If you can start there, 
to learn the person's story, then things will change. No? And it's vice versa. But may I also ask you, I want to talk about hope. What is yeah. hope? If people cannot eat, people cannot have hope. So mm. you work with people that hasn't got that haven't got food. How yeah. do you talk about hope? Yeah, hope we can come in different ways, my friend. Um, it, it depends on people, you know. Um, so hope of 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 obviously is a, is a, a better good feeling or better feeling about tomorrow. Looking forward to live tomorrow, right? So I work in the Squatter camps, I work in the villages and uh, all these poor areas. Uh, you you're talking about people where you even if you to go around and give them a pamphlet and it says don't spread the HIV, uh, use protection. They don't, they don't think about that because they don't got nothing for tomorrow. They don't care about that. And what they got for the day, they will do whatever, they'll do it. Uh, you got people who, when you go to the, the taverns, they, they have like 20 bottles on a table. That's what I'm working. And if that's what I have for the day, I'm going to enjoy that because I don't know what tomorrow's going to be for me. I've got no sense of tomorrow. Um, yeah, talking about people. So that's for me, that's when, your hope is sleeping when your hope is, is gone. So I try by all means for our work and what we do is um, we, um, we we make sure that um, um, we activate it, I create alternatives. I think so many people out there and in this kind of environment, they just, you know, my friend, it's not you're gonna, you're gonna buy someone a house or you're gonna buy them a bed or you're gonna buy them small things, man. Um, can bring up with someone. Friendship, we think it's small, but even saying hello to someone, hi, how are you? Especially, um, um, what do you call it? Um, the way, when someone has never been loved. I mean, I grew up where my, 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 I never had a good thing about me, but I'll go, I was, I was always, always a top student at school. I was doing well at school, and uh, um, I'll go home. I remember my mom was always drinking. When I show her my report, and she will always just go away, you know? And I was always a good student, I was top. So you understand, the hope is that it's killed and you got no one to say, well done, you got no one to tap you on your back. So there's many ways, you don't have to go and uh, give millions of friends um, to to make someone hopeful, but small things can change the bigger world and it can mean the world to someone. So that's for me is hope. Um, and um, other things, is, access to opportunities this stuff man people can access the people can access uh you know so and um and um, that's what they need I've, i'm working with a lot of um poor black people and they excel as more the opportunity they get they excel they do very great i mean i got girls who are running spa i got girls who are running farms i got girls who are running uh, laundry mats i got guys who are running Big gymnasium in the middle of the for camp, and there is a lot of pride. It's a bit in the middle of darkness. And so I'm saying, hope for me is also when South Africans, me and you, or some people out there, we start coming up together and we unite and we don't cycle for the wrong to what's happening. That's for me, it's hope also, because we know that everyone's happening, and we make sure that we we come together um, and we we do something about it. Yeah. So that's for me, it's also hope, you know, yeah. when people yeah. come together, ordinary or South Africans, instead of sitting down, do nothing, and we come together, clean up the mess, or whatever it can be, so that's hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give hope, bring hope. It's a choice. We can, oh, okay. we can do it. Man. Doc, what I want to know from you is, as a passionate follower of Jesus, faith yeah. is important for you. What will your message be? for the country at the moment, for any person, your message from God, from the Bible? Yeah, look, Christianity is supposed to be the salt of the, of the world. We're supposed to be the light. We're supposed to be the reason people have hope. We're supposed to be the reason where people love each other, they believe in love. Uh, we're supposed to be the reason that uh, people can come together. And uh, for me, the best thing is, and where we're struggling is, we as Christians, we need to start living. Faith will never be justified by believing only, but uh, it will be justified if we 
um, uh, live what we believe, what we say, when we say we love. Them. So um, my message is, let's keep living, let's keep loving. Uh, there's so many anger, there's so many resentment around the world, uh, simply because people get rejected, people get judged. Uh, we lay sentences of them, but I think, don't, conf- don't, don't, <laughs> don't get me wrong, very important to correct someone because they, simply because of accountability that um, we need to start loving, loving the ones who are not part of us, yeah. so called not part of us. We need to start loving the people who believe the, uh, uh, what we don't believe. Yeah. We need to start staying, staying calm, you know. We need yeah. to start. We need to start loving. And yes. I think it's simple. Love, love can come in a form, in form of respect, and a form of kindness and caring. Depend how you describe it, but I think we need to start respecting, be kind to each other, and uh, we care for each other. Yeah. Um, and um, so that's for me as simple as that. Um, yeah. My friend, there's nothing else better than saying Jesus has done it for us. He has opened the way for us, and He's the only fact and He's the only proof. Uh, and um, uh, for me, uh, uh, personally, and um, so it's very simple. Just love him, yeah. uh, love yeah. God, and love people. Um, that's it. That's exactly what Jesus answered when that rich man asked him, "Now, what should I do?" And Jesus said, yeah. "It's so simple: love, yeah. love God, love yeah, yourself." Love. Yeah, you are right, now. Doc, yeah. I want to thank you for for accepting to talk to me this morning, um, knowing that you are there with your granny that is that is getting older, and that you made time, um, and that even with all the interruptions of people wanting your attention, that you still can talk to me. So I appreciate this on a Sunday. No. Yeah, thanks, my friend. I think uh, thanks for. For uh, spreading the light, you always did, um, and we miss you in Joburg. Uh, and uh, and, uh, and thank you for the wonderful work you always do. You always ask everyone from the cleaners, from uh, the garden guys, from uh, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, James, uh, Malachi, Oscar, to Junior. Uh, you always brought you are a people's person, and you just have that gift. Uh, you, and they're all Miss Ladies. And unfortunately, we just lost uh, um, Pumsi there now, but uh, I'm sure wherever she yeah. is, she yeah. will remember yeah. you, my friend. You all, uh, thank you, and keep. let's keep um, the, the journey still uh, long ahead. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, everyone wants to do good. Everyone wants to um, do great, but let's do it together, black or white, and uh, let's continue doing that. It's very important. Let's not yeah. do things separately. Let's not live in our small country, small estates. Let's get out there. Let's not live. Let's not preach from our safe spaces. Let's live and preach in our real spaces by real life, interacting with real people. So, and you're doing it, my friend. And uh, uh, and thank you. Just keep on doing that. I hope that you saam kon luister. Of ten minste ook som saam kon lees as die klank van ons opname nie goed was nie. Maar dank nie dat jy geluister het. Mag jy rechtig dan in hierdie week leer om liefde te En dat mense, wanneer hulle jou liefde ontvang, ander mense word. Dat hulle anders is nadat hulle jou ontmoet het, as wat hulle was voor dit. Wees een bringer van hoop. Help mense om die kleur en die skoonheid van die lewe raak te sien. Word een dok mobila, wat op grondvlak vir mense hoop gee. Tot volgende week.